G'day, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Classroom Professor. Welcome to this video in which I will talk about identifying numbers that are multiples of two or multiples of four. This comes from our ebook called 10 Minutes a Day Level 3, book number four, Multiples and Factors. So this comes from a series for students in grade four or year five, and it helps them to recognize numbers um, right through numbers with three or four digits and, and beyond, which are multiples of the single digit multipliers um, up, to, up to 10 and 11 and 12 as well. So this is from the first set of worksheets from that book looking at multiples of two and four. The two easiest examples, I'm sure you agree. So let's start with a 10 frame. It's quite easy to show a connection between even numbers and the way they are arranged on a 10 frame. So looking at the arrangement of eight counters, we can see that it's an even number simply because the arrangement of counters is even. There's no extra ones on the end. So the single digit and numbers up to 10 are simple. Of course, we can continue that further. Once we've got 10, we can continue and look at 12 and 14 and so on. But what we can point out here is that 10 is already covered and effectively we don't have to look at the 10 because 10 itself is an even number. And we could back this up and have more tens. We could have two tens or three tens or, you know, 128 tens. All the tens are even numbers. So all we really have to look at is this last set or, of course, the last digit, the ones digit in a number. So we can show our students quite easily that we could have a whole lot of odd numbers maybe 3,574, that's an even number, simply because of the four. So the test for divisibility by two, the test to see if a number is a multiple of two, same thing, is look at the ones digit. Of course, we're not looking at decimal fractions, so we're not, you know, it's got nothing to do with fractions. This is just integers. The last digit, if it's a multiple of two, if it's an even number, including zero, of course, then the whole number is a multiple of two. So that's quite straightforward. Let's look at four. Now, looking at the multiples of four, it would be nice if we could look at the last digit again, but of course we can't because here we have four, eight, two, six, zero, four, eight, two, it's all the even numbers again. But we also have other numbers between them that are not multiples of four, like these here. And they also end with those digits. We've got six, zero, four, eight, two, six. So clearly we can't just look at the last digit. The test, of course, and I'm sure you're aware of this, is that we can th look at a hundred. I'm not gonna draw all the squares here, but imagine this has a hundred. Of course, we can divide a hundred into four equal pieces. We could do it that way. And of course, there are 25 in each piece. Students can recognize that by this stage. And so 100 itself is a multiple of four. So much like multiples of two, where we only have to test the ones digit, in multiples of four, we only have to test the last two digits, the tens and the ones. So again, if we have, let's put some columns here. If we have thousands and hundreds and tens and ones, we could have nine, seven, eight, zero. That's a nice, that's a fairly easy example. We can see this is a multiple of four simply because ignoring the digits that come before the last two, the eight, zero, the 80 is a multiple of four. So the entire number is a multiple of four. We could use more materials. We could put out some base 10 blocks maybe to show hundreds and reinforce the understanding for students by letting them see it for themselves that every hundred block is made up of 25 fours or a multiple of four 25 times. And so we don't have to consider them. So we can have a very, very long number and all we have to look at is the last two digits. Now that in itself is a bit of a challenge. So let's spend a, a bit of time looking at that. Here are the multiples of four up to 48. Now, if your students are learning up to 10 times number facts and they'll stop at 40, as looking at, sorry, it, it, considering the numbers that the students have learned in their number facts, they should be familiar with multiples of four up to 40 or 48, depending on whether you go to 10 times or 12 times when you teach it. 
Beyond that, we have to look at another method. So let me suggest a couple. So if we have a number like 74, at first glance, the student may not know if that's a multiple of 4 or not. So let's do a test. The first strategy here is to simply divide by 4. We're not going to use a calculator. That would defeat the purpose of the whole program, which is to develop mental strategies and develop fluency of understanding. So we're not going for an easy you know, te technological solution. We're just going to try a quick division. Can we divide this by 4? 7 divided by 4 is 1 with 3 left. 34 is not a multiple of 4. So 74 is not a multiple of 4. An alternative, let's take a different number. So I'll go for 62. Is this a multiple of 4? Let's try halving it twice, because if we double a number twice, we're multiplying it by 4. We should be able to reverse the process. Divide that by 2 or take half of it. It's 31. Can we get half of 31 as a whole number? No, we can't. So that's not a multiple of 4 either. Let's take one that is a multiple of 4. Let's say 64. Halve that, we get 32. Halve that, we get 16. That's an even number. Uh, it, it, we could halve it twice. And so... Um, 64 must be a multiple of 4. So that's the strategy. It is more advanced. It's for older students who've, who've learned their number facts. Um, but I'm pretty sure they're going to enjoy this. It's, a, it's a, a fairly simple way of testing for divisibility by 2 or 4. So that's the end of the video. I hope it's been useful and I'll talk to you next time.